in this video, I'm going to address a comment that I recently got in a YouTube comment that I was, thought was worth addressing. So the question essentially asked, why use datums, you know, like datum A, B, and C, on parts instead of just establishing some portion of the part as a zero and measuring it in like an X, Y, and Z. So there is some precedence for this system. It's kind of how the ordinate or coordinate dimensioning system works. So let me show you the difference. The first system, datums, use precedence. So you typically have three datums, sometimes two if there's a cylindrical feature. The idea is that you're restraining the part in all of the needed degrees of freedom. So you need it restrained in six degrees of freedom for location, but less for things like orientation. You restrain it, and then you get repeatability because you're measuring from the datum or the datum simulator, not from the actual feature. Let me show you what I mean. So I've drawn a figure on the board. It's just a typical example for a position tolerance. We've got this hole positioned to datum A, B, and C. So the way this works is that the position to datum A just controls the perpendicularity of the hole to datum A. It has nothing to do really with the location of the hole aside from the perpendicularity. B and C control the location of the hole and what we could think of in the X and Y coordinates. Now, in order to measure this, all three need to be locked down, right? If we had nothing stopping this side of the part, we could move it left or right to get a better measurement. Now, the question is, where do we measure from, right? So we could measure from one feature to another feature, or we could measure from the datum simulator to a feature, and it makes a big difference. I'll show you why. So if our actual part looks like this, right, it comes out a little off, which is okay. I mean, I didn't put the limits of size here, but it would have some kind of size dimension and potential variation. So this is just an exaggerated view. If we measure From the edge of the actual part to the hole, we're going to get one number, right? Whatever it is. But with GD&T, we're not supposed to measure from the feature to another feature. We're supposed to measure from the datum to the feature. So the datum simulators should be three perpendicular planes in this part that would usually be represented by like a surface plate and an angle plate, whatever inspection equipment you have. But it essentially Look something like that, okay? So you set the part in there, and you're gonna measure from the datum simulator, right? So this is perfectly 90 degrees to this. And that would be the dimension we would get if we measured it with GD&T inspection best practices. What this does is give you repeatability with your measurements. If you measure 100 of these parts, this way, you'll get consistent results. If you measure it from the edge of the part to the center of the hole, you might not get consistent results. You could get the same answer whether the part is bent way out of whack or not. So that's one thing GD&T does for us. Now, it doesn't always have to be A, B, C. It's usually done on what features are most important. So it could just as easily be A, C, B. If the datums were A, C, B, the part would fit into the datum simulators different, right? And we'd get a different result with the same part if we switch up the datum precedence. So this gives designers flexibility in specifying which features of the part are the most important. And it's usually a functional thing. It's usually mating surfaces. Where does it mate with its next part at assembly? It also gives inspectors a, basically a plan for how they're going to inspect it. It kind of tells them how to set up the part for inspection. Now, it's not the same in every inspection room, but at least you know what you're looking for. You know what you're trying to achieve. Now, that brings me to the ordinate dimensioning, or coordinate, where instead of having datums, we just establish an origin on the part and measure from there.
So the ordinate or coordinate dimensioning scheme looks like this. We're gonna establish a corner of the part as zero, and then we're just gonna enumerate out the dimensions with these straight extension lines. This is really popular with the sheet metal and flat parts because you're not really worried about the perpendicularity at all. With this method, we can't reference the flat surface, the datum A, but we just assume it's gonna be good enough. Now the problem with this system is we can't specify which side of the part is more important. And we also can't specify to use datum simulators, right? So if we go to measure this part, you're gonna get different results depending on how you set it up for measurement, okay? So it's not as repeatable as if you identified the surfaces as datums A, B, and C. That gives you a very clear method of setting it up because those, this angle right here it can never be perfectly 90 degrees. There's always gonna be a little bit of uh, play there with the part. So you gotta decide, are you measuring from the feature to the hole, or are you gonna set it up like GD&T and measure from here? right, if you measure from a, a angle block or something. If you measure from the feature, then you could get, you know, wacky results depending on how the part comes out. It might not necessarily tell you if the part is within spec. So if you imagine, you know, this surface is like this, you're gonna get the same exact reading. This part might not be functional. So if it was expected to fit in an assembly where this is a, it's supposed to fit into a right angle, the hole would be off, okay? So what I mean uh, more explicitly, say this is the assembly it's gonna fit into, right? We've got a hole and we've got two sides here. If we put this block in here, it matters whether we measure from here to this surface or here to this surface or if we measure to a datum simulator. It might not fit if we don't use the GDNT method, okay? And the, the last bit of the, the question was why don't we just use one origin for complicated assemblies? So something like an automobile, I think the comment mentioned, you know, just establish an origin, measure everything from there. Now, in some cases, this kind of thing is done, but what GDNT allows you to do is have multiple datum reference frames for complicated features. So often, you'll have something with unrelated bolt patterns. So think about an automotive engine block, right? You got one head, let's say a V8, you got one head with a bunch of holes drilled into it to fit the, the component part. And the other side of the engine, you have another bunch of holes for the other head. Well, they have nothing to do with each other. Right? As long as the pattern of holes is good within reason, on each side, they can have separate datum reference frames. And that's exactly what designers do. You don't want to measure from a surface on one side of the part to a surface on the other side of the part if you don't have to. So GDNT gives you the flexibility to have different measuring schemes for different portions of large piece parts and you know, for larger assemblies. So, that's it for this video. I just wanted to talk about the difference between GDT, ordinate dimensioning, and overall dimensioning with the coordinate method. If you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe, check out the channel, and I'll have more GDT content coming soon.